to the cloud. Okay. Um, today's lesson is going to be about science tools because it's important that you know what each of these tools is and what they do. Um, even if we're not doing hands-on labs, we still come across these tools uh, mentioned in the lessons, and so you need to know what they are. And you may have a virtual lab that involves some of these tools, so it's important that you know what they are. Um, so looking from the poll, about 50% of us are pretty familiar with most of them. There's a few that are um, only familiar with some. It doesn't look like anybody put none. So you've seen some of this, at least one or two of these tools before, which is good. That means you were paying attention in science class in elementary. Um, <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. And if you're not in here yet, go um, follow the instructions behind me. Follow them exactly. There is no code. I am doing this through Schoology as well, so it doesn't produce a code. You should just be able to go to Schoology, uh, quarter one, week two, day three, and click on the Nearpod, and it will work for you. So. Um, if you have a question while I'm doing this, please type it in the chat and it'll pop up on my screen. <sighs> Let's see. Science tools, nature of science, laboratory instruments. Um, to become successful, scientists must be able to identify and use scientific instruments or tools. These tools are for collecting data, taking measurements, and recording observations. Scientists use a variety of tools. There's a whole lot. And in this, particular lesson. We're just covering the main ones that we talk about in sixth grade science. There's a lot more than just this, actually. The first thing we always use, which you guys are using right now, is a computer. It performs tasks by processing and storing information. Um, computers are the number one tool that scientists use. They put all their data into it. You can use a computer to create graphs. Um, when you create your data tables, you can link them to a spreadsheet and then a spreadsheet um, using the spreadsheet you can automatically create a graph it's a little advanced for sixth grade but when we get to graphing i might do a lesson and kind of try to teach you guys how to coincide um, google sheets with a graph um, it does help when you get into higher level higher grade level science um, especially when you're in high school with chemistry and physics um, when you record your information in a table in Google Sheets, it is a lot easier to make a graph rather than trying to create one yourself. It will automatically label the X and Y axis for you. Um, it's a really, really, really good tool to use if you're not wanting to try to just come up with a graph on your own. Um, it's not too complicated of a process, but like I said, I would try to walk you guys through it if you don't know how to do it. If you want to play around with it, there are lots of YouTube videos on how to make how to make a graph from a spreadsheet. So if you're interested in that, you can check them out. We always use calculators in science. You don't use them in math in sixth grade, but I always allow my students to use calculators in science. Um, as long as you know the formulas, and how to put the numbers together, you can punch them into a calculator. I am okay with that. And in fact, I bought several extra calculators last year because we didn't have enough for every student to have one. Um, so I did a GoFundMe and I got, um, I think 15 to 20 more calculators for my classroom so that every student could have one during tests and stuff like that. Because we will be calculating speed and density and it gets into decimals and this is science. Scientists use calculators. We're not, I mean, we do use math, but I don't want you guys to have to try to divide big old decimals and stuff like that in the middle of the test. Um, so we usually use calculators to get those bigger numbers down. We, if we were doing hands-on, we would be using a hand lens and some of your virtual labs may have um, the hand lens option where you click on it and you hover over something and it makes it bigger. A hand lens, I'm sure you might have used one already in elementary school. It makes things a little bit larger so that you can see more details. A microscope, we don't really use a microscope in sixth grade. It is something that you do need to know about. Um, when we talk about cells, when we talk about uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, you'll be looking at images of cells under a microscope. 
and looking for the nucleus. So what a microscope does is you have this glass slide, you put your sample on it, um, you put it under the microscope and it has a light underneath it that shines through. And then you have a lens that you can turn depending on how magnified you want it. And you can see inside of a cell this way, like a skin cell, a plant cell. You can actually see little details inside the cell with the microscope. A telescope is not something we will actually use hands-on, but we talk about it in the space unit. Um, we talk about the creator of the telescope. Um, scientists use telescopes to view things way up in the sky that you don't, like the moon. You can't really see details of the moon just by looking at it. I mean, you can see like shadows and shades, but if you use a telescope, depending on how powerful it is, you can see details of the moon, like craters and, and mountains that are on the moon. Like you, it's incredible. So a meter stick, I hope most of you have used a meter stick already. Uh, it's used to measure um, distance and length. We do reference meter sticks a lot uh, because in science, we use the metric system. So instead of feet and yards, like they talk about in football, 100 yard dash or track, 100 yard dash, we don't use that system in science. We use the metric system. So we talk about meters, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters, um, and the meter stick is the best way to measure that kind of stuff. So when we talk about speed or distance, when we calculate that kind of stuff, we are going to be talking in terms of meters or kilometers. And the way you measure that, that sort of distance is with a meter stick. Thermometer, we all know what a thermometer is. I hope you do, especially with COVID-19 going on. Everyone's had their temperature taken, I'm sure, multiple times. Um, a thermometer measures how much heat an object has. Heat is actually energy, and um, it just tells us the exact amount in degrees. And in science, we use Celsius. So when you hear the weather on the weather station, or the news station, it talks about 98 degrees Fahrenheit, right? We don't talk in terms of Fahrenheit in science. We talk in terms of Celsius. Don't ask me the exact formula or calculation to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, because I don't know. I usually Google it. Um, and I, I Google the, the transformation of Fahrenheit to Celsius, because I honestly don't know. It's, I know that at zero degrees Fahrenheit, you're at, um, or is it, no, I'm sorry, at zero degrees Celsius, it's like, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, because that's the freezing point. So zero degrees Celsius is the same thing as 32 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. I, Y'all, I tell you, I don't really know myself. I usually Google it. So we don't talk in terms of Fahrenheit, we talk in terms of degrees Celsius. A compass, um, we not, won't, maybe you won't necessarily use a compass, but you will talk about directions. Um, north, south, east, west, especially when we do graphing speed and motion. Um, a compass is a tool that is used by using Earth's magnetic north pole. So your, um, your needle is always pointed north. So if you turn, it'll, it'll turn on the compass and show you what direction you are facing. A stopwatch, we don't use the old timey stopwatch like in this picture. We have digital ones and we do use them a lot. Um, there have been times where if you have a Chromebook out, you can go to the, um, there's a Google timer, I think that you can use and we'll use that version of the stopwatch. But in science, depending on your experiment, it's very important to keep time. It may tell you, you know, how long does it take for this ice cube to melt? And so once you start melting it, you'll need to hit the stopwatch and start the timer and then record your time. So a stopwatch is something we will use quite often. Triple beam balance. You may have used it in fifth grade. Um, a lot of times in elementary, they use a scale that's like this. It looks like this, but it's got two buckets on each end. And you put your uh, weight in one end and your item in the other, and you try to make it balance out even. Well, in 
middle school, we don't use those anymore. We use triple beam balances. And these are gonna be important to remember because you will have questions that require you to read a triple beam balance. So when you place the item, I don't have a pointer, so I'll just use my mouse. When you place the item on um, the plate there, it makes it go down. And what you do is there's these little um, rectangles on the bar here. They are, you slide them. So you slide them to the right. Um, in the middle, you can kind of see where it says 100, 200, 300. That's in grams. Everything we measure, mass and science, is in grams, okay? And when you move that middle one, if you move it up to the 100, you're, you're moving it up to 100 grams. If that plate, and when we get to actually like measuring density and, and mass and stuff like that, I'll, I'll share videos that show you how to use a triple beam balance. And they're very specific. Um, but when you move these weights, the plate is gonna either go up or it's gonna stay. If it goes up and it balances and it's just kind of floating there, that means you found the mass of the object. Magnets, we will use magnets a few times to run some tests, but since you've already used them or you should have an elementary a lot, you know the basic principle of them, we don't use them a lot in sixth grade. We talk about things being magnetic. Um, most things that are iron, nickel, or steel will attract to a magnet. Safety goggles, that is technically still a tool. We talked about that in science safety the other day. Um, they just protect your eyes from any kind of particles or chemicals that might get in them while you're doing science. Test tubes. If we get a chance to, you will see some test tubes in class this year, if we get a chance. Um, you might see them in a video otherwise. They are little glass vials that are used to combine chemicals. Um, usually it's only liquids that go in there. You might combine a solid with something, but most of the time test tubes are used with liquid. And there's a test tube holder that you put the bed where they can stand up. Beakers, you will see a lot about beakers. They usually have measurements on them. They're used to measure large amounts of liquid. Um, they're used to hold liquid. The glass ones can heat liquid. Um, they measure volume. Our volume is measured in milliliters. So a lot of times, you know, you hear a gallon of milk. That is not the unit that we use in science. We don't use gallons um, or ounces. We use milliliters or liters. Again, that's the metric system. A graduated cylinder is used to measure liquids in milliliters. It's usually smaller amounts of liquids. There are different sizes of graduated cylinders, like the one you see here is 250 milliliters. There are some that can go up to 500 milliliters. They're very precise in their measurement. So if you, if you need to measure a very precise amount of liquid, a graduated cylinder is the best way to go. A hot plate. You will see a hot plate either in videos or in person, depending on when we get to do science again um, in the school. It, it plugs into the wall and it works kind of like a stove. The top of it, it looks like a stove top. It's basically what it is. It gets super, super hot, like turns red, depending on how much heat you need. And you have to follow a lot of safety procedures when you're dealing with a hot plate. Most of the time when I do hot plates, I'm usually the one handling it or I assign one specific student to monitor the hot plate so that nobody gets hurt. Okay, I got this time to climb to help you review um, the tools. So you should start connecting and pick your character. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Since that part of the lesson, the main part of the lesson is over.